In this video, we're going to revisit Lenz's law, an important law of electromagnetic induction. We already met Lenz's law in an earlier video in this series of videos on induction. Here, we're going to discuss it again, but for a different type of induction, what I call flux changes in a loop. This will help us reinforce our understanding of Lenz's law. A previous video discussed the induced EMF and current that develops in a coil of wire when a magnet is pushed into it. A viewer left an interesting question in the comments for that video, asking how we knew that the induced current would flow anti-clockwise, as shown in the diagram. My reply summarized how we can figure this out, and we'll be discussing what I wrote in my reply. First, let's recap Lenz's law, which states that the direction of the induced EMF is such as to oppose the change that caused it. So when a bar magnet is pushed into a coil of wire. This results in a change of magnetic flux linkage in the coil. This change causes, via Faraday's law, an induced EMF and current to develop in the coil. If we were to look at the coil from the left, we would see an anti-clockwise induced current flowing. Why should this be? Recall that when current flows in a coil of wire, the coil behaves much like a bar magnet with its two ends functioning like magnetic poles. Remember that seeing an anti-clockwise current implies that that end is a magnetic north pole. This means that as the bar magnet is pushed in, the left end of the coil, which is a north pole, repels the incoming magnet. In other words, the direction of the induced current, which is determined by the direction of the induced EMF, is in precisely the right direction to oppose the change that caused it, the movement of the bar magnet. This is how Lenz's law enables us to predict what will happen in the coil as the magnet moves towards it. What if the bar magnet moves away from the coil? Pause the video and have a think about this. In this case, the induced current would flow clockwise, making the left end of the coil a south pole. This would thus magnetically attract the bar magnet and oppose its motion to the left. It's worth noting that Lenz's law is actually encoded in Faraday's law. The minus sign in Faraday's law reflects the direction of the induced EMF opposing the change that gave rise to it. We discussed in our previous video that Lenz's law is closely related to energy conservation. We can see that here as well. Pushing the magnet into the coil results in magnetic repulsion, meaning a force must be applied to keep the magnet moving. This means that the applied force does work, implying a transfer of energy. The energy associated with the induced currents hasn't appeared mysteriously out of nowhere. Energy is being conserved in this process. Another useful way of understanding what's going on is the following. Assuming the bar magnet starts far away from the coil, the magnetic flux density inside the coil is zero. As the magnet is pushed towards the coil, the magnetic field lines of the magnet poke through the coil. The fact that the coil itself now behaves like a magnet means that it now creates its own magnetic field, as shown. Notice that the magnetic field lines due to the induced current in the coil are in the opposite direction to the field lines due to the bar magnet. The result is that there's a cancellation of the magnetic field, and it's as if we're back to how things were at the start. The coil, it seems, doesn't like change, the change in magnetic flux, and does what it can to keep things the way they were originally. If the bar magnet starts close to the coil, its magnetic field lines are poking through the coil. Moving the magnet away to the left would result in the magnetic field in the coil decreasing to zero. How does the coil respond now? Again, it doesn't like changes in magnetic flux, so it does what it can to try and keep things from changing. An induced current flows which creates a magnetic field, as shown. If you compare this with how things looked at the start, you can see that there's not much difference. That's how the coil likes it. This leads to another more informal way of thinking about Lenz's law, when the induced EMF is due to a change in magnetic flux. 
we can say that the coil or loop tries to oppose any changes in magnetic flux linkage. I just want to stress, if you're asked to quote Lenz's law in an exam, you shouldn't quote this. You should quote the more formal version that we've already discussed. The informal version is just meant to be an intuitive way of developing your understanding of Lenz's law. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Lenz channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. I'd really like to hear from you. Thanks for listening, take care, and I hope to see you soon.